to absolutely the mic wasn't on. Well, if you just joined in, that's great. Crystal, my behind the scenes queen, left me for dead. We haven't gotten into the news yet, so if it just jumped in, don't worry about it. Brat has won. That is hilarious. Rat, brat, brat the rat has won. Now, again, let's hope he's not like Cantor. Let's hope he's not a, a tea bagger instead of a tea partier. But it looks like we've gone in the right direction here. Um, Steve Watson, PrisonPlanet.com, GOP Congressman Peter King has perfectly encapsulated the fear running through establishment Republicans following the victory of Tea Party favorite Dave Bratt, who won the Republican primary for Virginia's 7th Congressional District. Um, I'm happy about it. I'm very, very happy about it. Uh, he, he's a Christian, which is something that we could use in the party. Um, all of this talk about how he's going to be a detriment, if anything, he's a detriment to the Libertarian Party, of which I am a member. Because this... Ron Paul way of infiltrating the Republican Party, we're going to have more libertarians wanting to do this now. Because, hey, it worked for Brett. But again, I don't want to be the one to rain on the parade. Everything I've seen about this man I like. I haven't gotten into the nuts and bolts of his politics before the uh, comment line goes off and tells me how stupid I am. He seems, I don't know, he seems like a direction that we want to go in, at least in terms of the Republican Party, which has been abysmal. I mean, if they're going to do it this way. Defeating House Majority Leader Eric Cantor, Brad's miracle victory, has sent a shockwave through Washington, D.C., and has prompted King to warn that the GOP is in danger of takeover from the libertarian conservatives and their supporters. You know, as opposed to wonderful, non-lying uh, politicians such as George W. Bush. Yeah, I know. I wasn't against the Iraq War either. I, a lot of you are going to hate me for this, but I'm going to say it. I still wouldn't have been against the Iraq thing if it had been handled correctly. It, hate me all you want to. Call me a neocon. I'm not, but call me one. Um, Not to digress too much here, but... This notion that Al-Qaeda wasn't in Iraq prior to us going there, as much as I love Alex Jones, and I do, is wrong. Um, look it up. Musab al-Zakawi, the, the one that beheaded the reporter, the journalist, he was given safe haven in Iraq. So to say that there was no Al-Qaeda there, um, there were fascists there. Um, did we need to do what we did? No. Did George W. Bush do a good job? No. We can't follow Eric Cantor's defeat, it said last night, and allow the Ted Cruz's and Rand Paul's to take over the party or their disciples to take over the party. No, that is exactly what we want to happen, as a matter of fact. If you have an R by your name and there's any hope of anybody using the thinking part of their brain voting for you, this is what you want to happen. And again, Rand Paul has stabbed everybody in the back once again by supporting amnesty for people that broke into the country. Um, again, I've said a hundred times, the answer is to not allow any illegal immigrants to stay and to make it easier, simpler, less expensive, and faster to legally get in. So I'm not before said fascist. I'm not a fascist. I just don't want illegal people in my country any more than their country wants me there. They would kick my long-haired ass out of Mexico or let me stay in a prison. I'm concerned that, for instance, that the Ted Cruz supporters, it says, the Rand Paul supporters, are going to use this as an excuse to basically stop the government from functioning, King said. We can only hope. Adding that the government shutdown in October alienated the country, uh, no it didn't, which makes it very difficult for us to win in 2016. It alienated the give it to me free crowd. And again, long time listeners know I was, uh, my wife was actually, when we were together, she was on assistance for a while because she had Crohn's disease. I'm not against there being a safety net. I'm against the federal government running it, that's a state's issue. And I'm against the large number of people we have of all races, colors, creeds, religions, getting something for free. 
And when the government shut down, all the people that were getting their freebies were worried they weren't going to get it. That's who was alienated. What Ted Cruz did last year was suicidal. I hope it doesn't become party policy. Suicidal? He's one of the names being bantered about for the Republican nomination for president due to that. You don't. The king is an idiot. This is not conservatism to me. No, conservatism is bombing a wedding in Pakistan. Paul and Cruz supporters would argue that toting the party line goes against their principles while directly funding big government takeover of the healthcare industry, which is what was at the core of the 2013 shutdown, is anything but conservative. Good to hear. So, I mean, basically, King has come out and proved himself to be an absolute idiot. Um, I've read about Brat. Brat is awesome. Uh, he is in favor of a common sense approach to the border. Um, he is in favor of getting rid of Obamacare and letting this become a states' rights issue. He's in favor of a lot of things that are on the right side of history. So congratulations, Brett. Don't become a cantor because I can very easily turn this camera on and talk about how you betrayed us. And I don't want to have to do that and ask my listeners. I will. All right, friends, scgnews.com. The Las Vegas shootings, the Alex Jones anti-government connection, here comes trouble. This is a very good article that I've seen on this. And I want to address a couple of things that I've been hearing that don't make any damn sense. One of them is this Batman connection. Okay, maybe there's some kind of an MK Ultra thing going on because I know Sandy Hook was on the Batman map. And the guy dyed his hair supposedly to look like Heath Ledger, although the guy dyed his hair orange and Heath Ledger's hair was green. I've never understood that, but somebody colorblind spread the rumor and now it's called fact. In any event, Cristal and I went as uh, the Joker and Harley Quinn. It is not an unusual costume. So it's a bit of a stretch here to call this something like that. Second of all, and I'm going to point this out before I get to the article. I don't know a libertarian that would fly a Nazi flag. I know a lot of you are going to say, well, the Tea Party people are racist and they don't like blacks and black and they don't like Jews. Listen, first of all, that's not true. Second of all, Libertarians, by their very dare definition, want people to do pretty much whatever they wish to do as long as they're not harming anyone else. That's not to say that it's moral or that it should be done, but it should be allowed to. How does that tie in to fascism, which is Nazism? How in the world can a Tea Party member be a Nazi. That's like a Jew being a Nazi. It doesn't make any damn sense. So these people were not Tea Party members. And again, it wasn't a KKK card. And no, I am not saying that Tea Party members support the KKK. What I'm saying is for people that want to follow that train of thought, let's ride that train. Hitler stopped free speech. Tea Party members think that you should be allowed to say anything that you damn well please, whenever you damn well please, however you damn well please, for as long as you damn well please. How does that tie into the na uh, Nazi movement? Nah, it doesn't. Uh -huh. It says, even if you hate Alex Jones, if you are part of the any anti-government subculture, the Las Vegas shootings are going to be used against you. That isn't speculation. It has already started, and that is true. It says here that Alex Jones is, Alex Jones is diversive and talks about how he's somehow a Zionist because he married someone who was Jewish. I guess that makes me Islamist because Christelle is part Syrian. I don't know. It's the logic there. It make any sense to me either. Um, I speak from experience here. It says, due to my criticisms of the U.S. government and I work and the work I do exposing this mischief, I have a large number of anti-government and conspiracy-oriented individuals in my audience. And uh, many of them, he says, hates Alex Jones. 
It says, uh, the Las Vegas shooters, Jared and Amanda Miller, were indeed Alex Jones fan. I have verified this personally, and their personal opinions match a frequency that I encounter quite often in anti-government circles. Unfortunately, the connection is not tenuous. I've traced Jared and Amanda's social media interactions back through 2010, and they are consistent with the profiles of anti-government activists. What he's saying is, you need to stick up for Alex Jones, even if you hate him. It happens on this show all the time. When Justin Bieber got his DUI, I said, leave him alone. Did you see what he blew? He wasn't drunk. He was harassed. Um, I can't stand Justin Bieber. I'd rather listen to a fax machine being played through a bullhorn for an hour than listen to five seconds of a Justin Bieber song. That's how you stick up for what's right even when you don't like them. So while I support Alex Jones, I just told you a second ago I didn't agree with him on the Al-Qaeda Iraq thing. You support people who are of like mind, even if you don't support even most of what they say. Because you've all heard the expression. Uh, who, what was the, uh, the religious figure that said first they came after uh, this group, but I didn't speak up because I wasn't? They came after the Jews, but I wasn't Jewish. They came after the communists, but I wasn't communist. By the time they came for me, there was nobody left. I paraphrased. Um, that's why. And that's why that matters. That's the gist of the whole article here. It says, The links between Alex Jones and Jared Miller and the anti-government ideas are substantial. Jared was a dedicated fan who regularly posted InfoWars links. Um... The point, they're using an idiot to group us all together, which is why when I report on how much I hate Islamofascism, I'm always quick to say that I don't hate the Islamist. Your average Islamist watching this, hello, friend. I've got no problem with it. They're doing the same thing to all of us who support liberty that I make sure I don't do to my Islamic listening audience. How's that for a good paraphrasing to do it twice in one show it's bad news guys go look at the articles scgnnews.com it's definitely not great and it says in closing i'm not writing this to insinuate that the shootings were somehow caused by alex jones because i don't believe any of the sort i'm writing this because this info is publicly available so yeah he was supposedly one of us in the one of us can be freedom of speech loving nazis he was not one of us Friends, Infowars.com mentioned, uh, this is, it sounds like good news, but if you go to Fukushima Diary to give you two links right in a row, they're cutting corners on this ice wall that I'm about to read about. And the trouble is that it's supposed to have like a clay base. They're cutting that off because to save money, that's the easiest way to do it. That's going to make the ice wall not work properly. And they're already going into uncharted territories by trying to do this. If you're new to the topic, there's a quadruple meltdown, melt through melt out happening in Fukushima, and they're trying to prevent the water flowing into the ocean to some degree by putting up an ice wall, and they're cutting corners on the ice wall. And normally it's been used in the past for like subway station construction and things like that. Tokyo Electric Power, which is TEPCO, which is GE, which is who you never want to have any stock in. Get your uh, money out of any mutual fund that they're in. On Monday, started building a huge underground ice wall around the Fukushima number one reactor plant to reduce the generation of toxic water at the crippled complex. And it's, uh, it's from the Japan Times, I should say. It was linked on InfoWars. So if you do hate Alex, all he did was link it. Um, TEPCO, as the beleaguered utility is known, uh, plans to finish the 1.5 kilometer wall and have it up and running by the end of March 2015. Meanwhile, 300 tons, 300, 000, uh, 300 tons of nuclear uh, contaminated water go into the ocean daily. It will then take a few months or so to fully freeze the soil, the official said. The Government-funded project, it's 1,550 pipes that will be inserted into the ground to circulate coolant and freeze the surrounding soil. It's aimed at preventing the groundwater from seeping into the plant's four cracked reactor buildings. You know, and so we're going to cut cost on this. 
G E. We bring good things to life. Bastards. Last month, nuclear regulators gave the green light to the unprecedented project after the utility succeeded in convincing them that it will not trigger significant subsidence that could further endanger the buildings. In other words, they're sitting like this. And they're worried that if you freeze it and it doesn't freeze properly, then it may freeze like that. And then boom, end of the northern hemisphere. If you don't believe me, ask Helen Caldicott. Evidence of land substance, sub, substance has seen at one of the buildings early in the crisis and more recently under some of the hundreds of water tanks that have been overlooking the reactor buildings, which are just waiting to leak more than they already have when they were hid from us prior. On Monday afternoon, it says plant workers started digging a hole for one of the pipes near the number one reactor building, but the utility said it still needs the Nuclear Regulation Authority's permission for work that could undermine the plant's safety. Yeah, it's a remarkable safety record thus far. Including ignoring the scientific prediction that this was in fact going to happen. Um, I've reported on it many times, you can look it up. They've been warning about this happening since the early 2000s. And in 2011, of course, no one could see it coming. The buildup of radioactive water generated by the need to cool the damaged reactors is a major problem at the plant, it goes on, where toxic water is building by around 400 tons a day due to the groundwater from the mountains that is entering reactor building 1 to 4. Last paragraph, friends, in another effort to deal with the toxic water problem, the wonderful safe people at TEPCO, which is GE, where you never want to invest, said Monday that it had dumped 833 tons of untainted groundwater into the Pacific Ocean after intercepting it and diverting it through wells. The third release brought the total volume of ocean clean, clean the volume of clean water released under the so-called ground bypass system to 2,035 tons. A little bit of Fukushima news for you. If you like that, um, make sure you subscribe. Many of you know once a month we have the massive Fukushima update um, on here. Guys, um, this is ArsTechnica.com. Don't think I've ever had them on here before. Real short one. Private firms sue Arkansas for the right to collect license plate data. Um, God bless the governor of Arkansas for being right on this and standing up on the right side of history here. I'm very happy to see this. First Virginia, now Arkansas. Two major firms in the license plate reader industry have filed a lawsuit against Arkansas governor and attorney general alleging that their private corporate rights have been violated under a new state law banning the private collection of such data. So I'm going to give you some companies that you also never want to invest in. As ours has reported before with a link, the scanners have been increasingly deployed in cities and towns across the U.S. LPRs can read, analyze, and store 60 plates per second. Typically, the LPR checks an unknown plate against a hot list of wanted or stolen vehicles. But the tricky part is that the LPRs aren't just looking for suspected bad guys. They almost always record and retain the time, date, and precise location of every license plate scanned, often for years and sometimes forever. In this case, the two firms in question get your pens out, write these down so that you never invest in Digital Recognition Network, that is to say DNR, and Vigilant Systems uh, generate, maintain, and share access to the license plate reader database with law enforcement. Oh, that sounds like a great idea. The new Arkansas state law took effect in 2014, thankfully, and it bans the private collection of license plate reader data while still allowing the cops to use the devices usually mounted on patrol cars, so they can still use them for realistic purposes. The two companies say that their First Amendment rights were being violated as they were allowed to photograph even under an automated high-speed process that is then shared with law enforcement any and all plates anywhere. So at last we have the government, the state government anyway, on the right side of an issue and we have, as always, corporations, businesses, big money trying to destroy what the government hasn't already ruined. I've told you repeatedly, friends, that is the basis of fascism, which is why the Millers were not one of us. 
You can read the rest, guys. What am I saying? What's my point? Support the governor of Arkansas and thank him for being on the right side of history. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. I got a few more stories that I do very much want to get to. But before I do, I want to invite you guys to look up the work of Mike McLaughlin. He is an amazing writer. He does fiction. He does short stories. does poetry. A little bit of everything. And if you like that kind of thing, and if you don't already, you will when you read his, I encourage you to go and look up his work at Facebook.com. Mike McLaughlin. You will love his stories. And while you're at it, go to uh, Amazon.com and look up the books A Sleep Unknowing, the short story The Lucky Leprechaun. It's like a Tales from the Crypt kind of thing. And the persuasive essay, Risen, all of them are written by me and for sale at Amazon Kindle. Look it up. All right, guys, Infowars.com has, I didn't see today, a link list before I give them more credit. <laughs> I'm sure they did. Um, honey, the solution for antibiotic-resistant superbugs. This was excellent news because this is a very easy, easy fix. Yes, this is Infowars, Elizabeth Rentor. This is excellent news because I've seen it on Natural News. I've seen it on the Natural Society. I've seen it everywhere. The natural antibiotic properties of honey. And if you think about it, everyone likes honey, but nobody really ever eats it. I don't. Uh, But when I do, I put it on everything. It looks like we all just might want to up our honey a little bit here. Study after study after study. If you think I'm a nutcase, look, look up the facts yourself. It's not that long of a story. Antibiotic resistance is a true crisis, one that is growing and is even recognized by the federal government as a near future crisis. An over-dependence on antibiotics and sanitization of everything has helped bacteria evolve into unstoppable superbugs. I'm, I'm, for one, am not a firm believer in this. What's causing it is most of the antibiotics that is used in food because they don't want to raise food properly they give the animals an overdose of antibiotics practically just to keep uh, it possible to raise them in a pen so small that they can't turn around. I've said it before, I'll make it quick. A lot of times you do need antibiotics for viruses. Why? Because a virus can attract uh, mucus and the mucus will attract bacteria. You now have a bacterial infection. So if you have mucus, it's not a bad idea to have uh, some kind of antibiotic if it's starting to become discolored. Having said that, you can avoid getting sick and even needed antibiotics. Um, look up how to, uh, how to avoid the dreaded cold, mediaspeaks.com. Best article I've ever written. It says the solution is complex and involves reducing our use of antibiotics, but it may also include the use of something as beautifully simple as honey. The unique property of honey lies in its ability to fight infection on multiple levels making it more difficult for bacteria to develop resistance. And Susan M. Menschwitz, Ph.D., leader of the study, presented at the 20, 247th National Meeting of the American Chemical Society. So again, if you hate Alex Jones, uh, it's a doctor that said it. I also want to say, if I may, that we might want to develop antibiotics that work on uh, multiple levels. Maybe she's on to something there without even knowing it. <coughs> Honey, Dr. Mixwitz went on, acts using a combination of components toxic to bacterial cells, including osmotic effect, high sugar content, so be careful, diabetic friends, uh, polyphenols, acidity, and hydrogen peroxide. Honey may also disrupt quorum sensing, which weakens bacterial virulence, rendering the bacteria more susceptible to conventional antibiotics, Meshwish said. It goes on that her research isn't the only to identify the powerful antibiotic. As I've mentioned, you can find the studies of the Natural Society's Christina Syrick and uh, many others. It's, she mentions how it's awesome for uh, streptococcus aureus, that's strep throat, I believe. Metacillin resistant, uh, often, which is metacillin resistant, which is antibiotic resistant, and even MRSA. Fifteen antibiotics were tested with and without sublethal concentrations of Manuka honey against each of the M- M- MRSA, MRSA, and uh, Pseudo- Pseudomonas aeruginosa ar- using disc diffusion, broth dilution, e strip. Checkerboard tri- 
titration and growth curves. I'm not going to lie. Half of that, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to go ahead and give it to you that do, that say I never give you sources. Wrote the study authors in PLOS1. Now, five novel antibiotic and Manuka honey combinations were found that improved antibacterial effectiveness in vitro, Europe, and those offer a new avenue of future topical treatments for wound infections caused by these two important pathogens. It says another study came to similar conclusions, finding honey, particularly that derived from bees foraging on manuka flowers, halted one type of streptococcus from in, in, inhibiting the healing of wounds. So guys, it looks better and better and better. It mentions Anthony Gucciardi, who's an excellent writer, uh, mentions it was traditionally used to fight infection up to around the 20th century. Around that time, honey was forgotten and predominantly replaced with penicillin, but is now regaining popularity, which is very good to hear. Two more stories to get to. I love this because Kyle Phillips, I want my Doge coins. How many Doge coins do you owe me? I, I bought Doge coins through Kyle Phillips, uh, KP, the technician on a mission. I'm kidding. He'll dump, he'll get them to me. I'm playing, but I'm so happy because I'm watching my Doge coins go up, 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 up. Dogecoin is going to the moon, literally. It was dated way back on May 15th, but I kept wanting to delete it like I do stories that I had never get to, and I just couldn't get rid of it. Dogecoin, some call it doggy coin, is going to make it to the moon and in the form of a rover. After conquering Earth by way of NASCAR, they were an advertiser on there, the meme-based cryptocurrency is aiming to live up to its To the Moon slogan by 2015. That is, if all goes well, with RevUp's render Dogecoin-themed Lunar Editrod Challenge. I don't know where that is. Nice word. Instead of real dogs pulling sleds up in Alaska, a la the famous... Oh, okay. A la Detrod. I guess that's where they pull the... I, you learn something new every day. The cloud computing design firm is hoping to see little autonomous robots covering in Dogecoin logos racing each other first in San Francisco, and then ultimately the moon. Now, this is wonderful news for those of you that have purchased Dogecoin, like I said that you should, and if you haven't, there's still time, but I would move. RevUp forked over the seed money to snag the Dougie-themed competition a spot on Google's forthcoming Moonlander. In the lunar Idatrod, uh, participants would first design and build micro-rovers the size of smartphones dubbed Doge Sleds that would race against each other on Earth in five different stages. Competitors must pay in Doge coins to enter each stage naturally. The first stage costs 2,500,000 Doge coin to enter about $1,050 worth at the time of this writing, and each subsequent stage will go up in Doggy coin price. I don't have that many, but I, I may say, I probably wish I did. The top three Doge sleds are the winners of the fifth and final stage, and those selected by seven judges will then be sent to the moon on the Google Lunar X Prize team's lunar lander. There, the three Dougie sleds will then race against each other on a nine-meter course on the lunar surface. They're looking to make this happen in the fourth quarter of 2015, so it's not uh, ages off. Uh, you'll know if it's going to make it the uh, closer we get. And, I, and there's a lot more on there, but friends, I'm not going to bore you with that. Look it up because it's awesome. The article, I gave you the link. And that brings us to the dum de dum de dum de of the day. I do a dunce cap of the month once a month, every month. And I ended up, uh, even though I do six or seven at the end of the, uh, beginning of the month when I do them, I always end up with too many dum de stories to possibly get to in one show. So I do the dum de of the day to close every show, and that's what I'm doing now. Paul Joseph Watson, PJ, dub, PrisonPlanet.com. Wait till you hear this. Middle school students who complained over dress codes suspended for terroristic threat. Yep, you can tell right there, dum de of the day. Just know as soon as you see it. Two dozen Spalding County Middle School students were suspended after a Facebook post which encouraged classmates to break the dress code characterized by a terroristic threat by the principal. 
Now, what I'd like you to do is uh, go to Spalding County Middle School on Facebook and let them know how stupid they are and let them know that you were sent from the correct views. Uh, hey, anyone that asks um, why you sent the dunce cat back, anybody who asks that on the Department of Education's page, I'm going to go ahead and promote your favorite charity and give $5 to it. The Post asked other students at Crowan Road Middle School to carry on to flout the rules for the final week of term by wearing red on Monday, despite the fact that most of the students simply shared or commented on the Facebook post and didn't actually break the dress code, they were suspended anyway. Any stupid rule like that already deserves to be broken. The principal was like, okay, you're a threat to our school, and then suspended me, the seventh grade student told WSB-TV. To me, it was just a bunch of 13-year-olds acting crazy, said Christopher Cagle, nice name. The father of a suspended honor roll student who added that the principal did not inform any of the parents before suspending the students, labeling their actions a terroristic threat. Uh, that's because we're